Welcome. Today, we'll be looking at properties of parallelograms, and we're going to concentrate on the figure of rhombus. The first property that we want to show is that given a rhombus, diagonals in rhombus are going to be perpendicular to each other. Let's start by writing down the properties of a rhombus. If we have a rhombus, then we know that all sides are congruent to each other. Let's draw those diagonals. Let's draw a diagonal that connects A to C. And let's draw another diagonal that connects B to D. Now we already know that a rhombus is a parallelogram, and we have already shown before that within a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. Therefore, if diagonals bisect each other, let's actually annotate here the intersection point, let's call it F. Then if that is the case, then we know that AF is going to be congruent to FC, and BF is going to be congruent to FD. Notice that by introducing those diagonals, we have also created different triangles. Let's highlight two of them. Let's highlight BAF, and let's put it here on the side. And let's highlight BFC. Let's actually show it using some colors here. Is there anything that we know about these triangles? Well, let's look at what we know about the rhombus. We know that AB was congruent to BC because those are the sides of the rhombus. That's what we have here. And in addition, we know that AF was congruent to FC. So we can put that in here. AF was congruent to FC. By symmetry, BF is congruent to itself. So if we take a look at these two triangles, we can see that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And the reason behind it is because of side, side, side congruency. All sides are congruent to each other. Since those triangles are congruent to each other, then we know the corresponding parts are congruent to each other. And we're going to concentrate on angle BFA, which we do have it here, which is shown right here on this, on the rhombus. And we're going to concentrate on BFC as well. And we have it here on the diagram. Now let's think about this for a second. Notice that if you add those two angles, you get a straight line. A straight line has 180 degrees. And notice that we're cutting it into two equivalent parts. And the only value that will make this happen is if they are of 90 degrees. Therefore, this intersection right here is going to be 90. This intersection right here is going to be 90. So that indicates that AC is perpendicular to BF. And notice that we wanted to show because AC is a diagonal and BF is part of the diagonal. And therefore, we have shown that diagonals in a rumbles, they will always be perpendicular to each other. Let's take a look at another property. What we want to show now is that diagonals in a rhombus also bisect two angles. Let's start by labeling the information about a rhombus. So here we know that all sides are congruent to each other. And let's introduce those diagonals. We have already shown that diagonals bisect each other. Let's actually introduce a point right here. Let's call it F. So therefore, AF is going to be congruent to FC. And BF is going to be congruent to FD. Now, what do we know about these four triangles that we have within the rhombus? Here we have triangle ABF, and here we have triangle BFC, and here we have triangle AFD, and here we have triangle DFC. Here we can see that all of those triangles are congruent by side 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 congruence theorem. So if all triangles are congruent to each other, then corresponding parts are congruent to each other. Now, what are the corresponding parts that we want to concentrate on? Here we have the corresponding part of angle DAF, which we have it here. And here we have the corresponding part of BCF, which we have it here. Now notice that they are of the same measurement. And then in addition, BAF 
is going to be congruent to FCD. Now let's think about this for a second. We have four angles and they're all equal to each other. And if they were all equal to each other, that means that they were cut in half. And if they were cut in half, then we can claim that the diagonal is the one who cut it in half. So therefore, we can make the claim that diagonals bisect opposite angles. And the same can be said about the diagonal that runs vertically, BD. Let's take a look at the last property for rhombus. So here, let's assume that the left-hand side, we don't know that it's a rhombus. Let's assume that we only know that it's a parallelogram. So if it's a parallelogram, the only thing that we know is that opposite sides are going to be parallel to each other. And in addition, opposite sides are also going to be congruent to each other. But now, let's say that there are two consecutive sides that are congruent to each other. Let's say that those consecutive sides are side AB and side AD. If two consecutive sides are congruent to each other, then that's enough conditions for us to make the claim that this is a rhombus. How so? Well, if AB is congruent to AD, we have it right here. Since this is a parallelogram, we know that opposite sides are congruent to each other. So therefore, the length that AD had is the same length that BC is going to have. And the length that AB is going to have is the same length that DC is going to have. And by doing so, we have shown that all the sides of this parallelogram are congruent. Therefore, this is a rhombus. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.